What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about intermittent fasting. A new study says it's better. Let's find out. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new meta-analysis got published looking at the effects of time-restricted eating versus just straight calorie restriction. So they had a few different categories that had overall time restriction. They had also separated into early time restriction, late time restriction, meaning their feeding window was late, early, or in the middle of the day. So they looked to see one, did time restriction make a difference, and two, did the time of day for time restriction make a difference. Now I'm gonna jump to the spoiler alerts. The study showed essentially for weight loss, all forms of time restricted eating were slightly better than caloric restriction, and it didn't seem to matter between early and late or middle of the day TRE, it seemed to be very similar. They also looked at several blood markers like fasting glucose, blood pressure, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol. All of those blood markers were no difference between the intermittent fasting and the calorie restricted groups. So does this study mean that intermittent fasting is superior? Well, if you look at the difference in weight loss, it's pretty small. It's like a kilo and a half of, of body weight. And then if you look at the fact that they broke down into fat mass and lean mass, they saw no differences in either. They actually saw like similar amounts being lost between the groups. Now they did see a trend for a little bit more loss of waist circumference in the intermittent fasting group. So that means everybody should do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is better. So this is an example of where the heterogeneity of studies can really make a big impact in a meta-analysis. So I'm not saying this meta-analysis is bad because there's just not that many studies out there looking at this specific topic and the inclusion criteria. But ideally with a meta-analysis, you're narrowing your criteria window pretty tight so that all the studies that you're including are quite similar. One thing that was not an inclusion criteria for this study was for the groups to be calorie matched. So even though the control group or the calorie restricted group was in a calorie deficit, they did not necessarily match calories in some of these studies. Now, some of them they probably did, but some of them they didn't. And we do know that if you're doing kind of a free living, time restricted eating versus calorie restriction, in general, people in a time restricted eating do a little bit better in terms of losing weight initially. And that's probably just because it's something so simple to follow eat during these times, don't eat during these times, whereas trying to teach people portion size or tracking, sometimes for some people that can be a little bit more difficult. I don't think that this means time-restricted eating is superior. If it was superior, we would really expect to see some differences in those blood markers as well, as well as differences in actual fat mass in the studies that measured fat mass, and we, we didn't see that. So I'm not saying it's not a valid way to lose weight, it absolutely is. I think time-restricted eating is a great tool for a lot of people, but like any tool, we need to look at what are the positives and negatives. And this is the same for what I do, flexible dieting. Positive and negative flexible dieting. Well, the positives of flexible dieting, I can choose whatever foods I want to fulfill my macros. I have to track, because if I don't track, I'm not aware of my portion sizes. I also have to be pretty diligent with the foods I'm choosing, otherwise I will not get close to my fiber targets and I'll eat too much saturated fat. So it requires a lot more monitoring on my end, like active monitoring, logging, paying attention. That trade-off makes sense for me given that I know my adherence drops way down if I'm trying to stick to a rigid meal plan or trying to do time-restricted eating. I've tried those before. I, I just, it, I have struggled, I have trouble sticking to it. The trade-off with time-restricted eating might be, well, you know, I can't eat at the times I want necessarily, or all the times that I want, but I also may not have to track my food. I don't have to do as much active monitoring. I just watch the clock and eat when the clock tells me. But we know from the most tightly controlled, randomized control trials, time-restricted eating versus calorie restriction, when calories are matched in studies, they don't see differences in weight loss. So again, this is actually a fabulous thing because it means do what you particularly prefer. All right, guys, I'll catch you next week.